Oh, good evening. So, this is uh, episode 21 of uh, the live streams, and I'm going to be talking about cameras. So, uh, the last few sessions uh, I've been talking about equipment, and we've had a few people asking specifically about cameras and how um, how I use them. Oh, well, yeah, because I can only speak about how I use them. I'm not going to talk about any uh, dramatic stuff like the drone we have in the back there. Uh, just literally the underwater side of of, of uh, my photography. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to first talk about uh, photography uh, breath hold apnea. So breath hold apnea underwater photography and then I'm going to talk about the equipment that uh, that I use so um, hopefully you know you, you'll get something out of it as always any questions uh, you can put them on the live stream now um, or if you put them in the uh, comments uh, when it goes online and I can answer them then so let's kick it off with uh, photography so uh, photography um, is uh, huge it's like massive like eh, there's magazines there's hundreds if not thousands of cameras out there magazines telling you which ones to buy and you've got to kind of hone it down to what you want to what you want to do so we're talking about underwater uh, photography in particular but even more specific than that um, is we're talking about breath hold um, uh, underwater photography. Now, uh, when I talk about the equipment, I'll be talking about what what makes a good uh, camera or a camera that I would, you know, that I use uh, when doing underwater uh, breath hold photography. Um, but we even take it one stage further, and we do um, uh, underwater breath hold cave photography so even more niche and niche and niche and niche so that's that's the kind of angle we're, we're going at but generally in photography uh, there's a lot of luck involved a lot of luck you've got to be in the right place at the right time but if you don't go to places you're not going to be in the right place at the right time so you've got to put a lot of effort into getting to the right place at the right time and as a friend of mine Ian uh, uh, often says when you say wow that's a great photography that you must be really lucky to get that he says yep it's taken me 20 years to get that lucky and it's a it's a true adage you just got to keep doing it and keep doing it um, and and you know you've got to be in the right place at the right time but um, you've also you've also got to be using your camera okay so it's okay to be in a place uh, and how many times have you seen heard somebody say, oh, I nearly got this great photo? Well, you've got to be there with your camera. And you've got to be using it. You've got to be clicking away, clicking away. Um, else you're not going to get the shot. Okay. So um, moving on from there, you, you've got to think about your subjects. Okay. So you, for, for me, I've got uh, two options. I've got wildlife. And so... Uh, my wildlife photography is, is something like this. So there's uh, some dolphins, but for me, it's nothing without a free diver, and it's got to be a two shot. So you've got I I have to have a free diver in the shot with with the uh, wildlife, and this is called a two shot. And you can't really set up uh, the wildlife shots. Um, it's it's the simplest. Uh, of, of the different types of photography except it's also the hardest okay it's simple get yourself in a place where the wildlife is going to do what you want it to do all okay? right but of course you can't control the wildlife so the cat the wildlife and i talk about wildlife and the cat comes in and starts crumpling around okay um so you can't control like that. You can't control what wildlife's going to do. So it's the hardest, but it's e equally well the simplest because you got you got you know what you want it to do, and you just kind of effectively set, do as best you can, and then let the wildlife do its thing. As soon as you go into a two shot, you can control the model sometimes, um, but again, 
it's really down to the model to interact with the wildlife in the way that you want. And for me, I don't ever want to see the wildlife being disturbed. If I can see if the wildlife's being disturbed because of the free diver, that's not a shot that I, I'm even interested in uh, kind of having. So it takes a little bit, uh, a little bit more kind of specific. The other thing is. Um, uh, taking a photo of a fish swimming away from you for me is just like yeah no that's 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 not working for me uh, it means that you know you scared it and, and it's swimming away and you're you're too late to take the photo and uh, I've got a, a cat wrangler coming in now to uh, take away said wildlife um, so moving on from wildlife we've got um, set up photography so uh, that um, uh, that shot we have there of Arno uh, gliding down, that was actually taken by an Ian, possibly. I took one shot, he took one shot. He claims it's his, I claim it's mine. But, you know, we're both there. And you've, you set up the shot so you know where you, where you should be, you know where you should model should be, and you can, you can kind of uh, get some. So there's Arno uh, again. Uh, in a swimming pool, very easy to control the variables. Uh, Adam in Iceland, again, I just told him where I wanted him to swim and just kind of let him do it. Kiri uh, in uh, Marsa, uh, playing with a pop gun. Uh, Lucelle on the Christine in, in, in uh, Greece. And if you can, you can get multiple models to, to do what you want them to do. So in this shot here, um, it's it's there's three people doing exactly what we 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 choreographed um and on top of that there's a lot of lighting going on i'm lighting all the three subjects and behind arno and freya um i've got another light inside the building so i'm going to talk about lighting as well a little bit but set up shots you know what you're doing you think about it you tell the models what you want you're stepping it up in in skills that you require because you do need to communicate with the models else they're just not going to do what you expect them to do let alone what you want them to do and many a time um i've been down there i'm waiting i'm waiting i'm waiting and i turn around and the, and the diver's like behind me doing something over there it's like no no uh, i didn't tell them i wanted them to do it there yeah so there's a layer of of a complication to this because you've got to have the idea then you've got to communicate to them and then they've got to do the dive now bear in mind I allow myself um, usually 30 seconds for a photo uh, at the bottom so uh, obviously if it's shallower you've got a bit longer if it's, it's deeper you know you're, you're knocking on 30 seconds but in my mind I always allow 30 seconds for a photo so I've got to get in place. The models get get in place, and if there's wildlife involved, then you know that that's kind of another layer. You've got 30 seconds. Click, 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 click. End of. But I said at the beginning, uh, we as no tanks as a group, because it gets to the point now where if you are uh, using models, then there's at least two of you plus safeties. But if we go into dark uh, water, then I will have uh, light, somebody lighting uh, the image, maybe somebody lighting the person as well, um, plus the model, plus the uh, safety. So most of these pictures you're going to see now take about six people. So this one here, we had two lighting me, uh, and so six people in this. This was only two people. There was quite a lot of natural light. But hipster, I had to kind of get his light. This was all natural light. So this is Freya in Barbados. Beautiful shot. And here, again, this is all natural light. So this was out in Greece. And uh, I, I've said, you know, getting people, lighting people to light it. Okay, we had safeties on this dive. But for this one... We had to get the light in the right place. Now, it's okay for me to ask somebody, uh, oh, Darren, can you move the, the, the light down a little bit next time? Can you light here? Uh, that's easy. Darren's good. He's, he's like, yeah, I'm doing it. I'm, 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 I can do that next dive, Marcus. No problem. But when you're using the sunlight like this shot, 
we had to get the right time of day in the right location at the right angle and this actually took um, two years to take this shot and we worked out the exact time of day that the light had to shine into the cave the angle that I had to be to get hipster in front of the sunbeams at the right angle so you know um, lighting is lighting is super super important uh, but it adds layers of, of complication onto it okay so my adage uh, my um, words of wisdom are uh, with photography practice more practice and play play more and play more okay really go for it play with your camera i i have mine on my desk all the time um and i'm oh uh, and i'm always just uh, coming up with ideas changing settings playing with it playing with it playing with it um i'm using it quite a lot dry obviously at the moment because we can't get wet and just trying stuff out um i remember one time we were we were in uh, in in a cave uh, in greece and it was a lit cave so um it was pretty much pitch black underwater but above there was a little bit of sunlight coming in through the through the entrance and david mckenzie and i decided that he had a brand new 360 camera and we were going to try and get a, a 360 shot of underwater and above water at the same time um so we had to go and buy some chips that came in a polystyrene uh, foam uh this was a few years ago i wouldn't do it these days with polystyrene um but we did dispose of it uh, responsibly especially in greece because they've got a real problem with polystyrene uh, in the fisheries but it was a polystyrene uh, like chip pan that we cut a hole in and we used hair clips because it was super it wasn't very buoyant we placed the camera so the lens half the lens was underwater half the lens was above and we floated it in uh, in this cave and hopefully we got the timing right where I was underwater taking a photo of somebody who was lighting somebody else and there were people on the surface as well and we tried to get it and in fact we got the shot it wasn't amazing um, quality but the actual shot was absolutely incredible so hopefully uh, if David watches this um, he can post it and, and I can put it in the comments or something because that was an incredible shot and a 360 shot so you can scroll around and look up and look down um, it was incredible but we had to play and it took hours and hours and hours to make this little flow and cut the holes the right size and dispose of the polystyrene in the polystyrene proper way um, and that's that was incredible that was in Greece so we had a lot of light there um, above water and below light below we had our, our anchor dive lights that were lighting the, the scene like it was it was epic but it was playing it's 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 just playing trying new things seeing how far you can push your camera okay and so that when you're actually on the shoot you know roughly what uh, what you can what you can do now um, I have different settings and I'll talk about them in a minute but realistically um, you know the more you play the more you get used to how your camera reacts the, the better you're going to be in 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 the photo shoot okay so uh, that's that's photography as such um, um, sorry i've just seen uh, seen ian's uh, ian's post about remote flashes again cave photography is insanely difficult and yeah we did actually have a, a shot where we had a whole series or ian set up a whole series of uh, flashes dry above the water all the way down this cave as we were diving it it was incredible and and fun and fun just just trying it out and again the, the shots were incredible um okay so that's that's uh the photography thinking about what you want to do and getting yourself in the right place to be able to do it okay but we're kind of moving into the equipment uh level of things so uh personally um i obviously do all my photography uh, is breath hold so it needs to be small okay so i can take it so i can't i haven't i've not got a hand spare Okay, I've only got one hand usually. I'm holding a sled or or, or, or the rope or something, um, 
and it has to has to has to be wide angle if you're going to take photographs underwater don't even bother without a wide angle lens just just don't bother um, the wide angle uh, allows you to get closer to the subject and minimizes the amount of water between you and the subject and water destroys photos so the further you move away the more water is in between the worse the photo is going to be end of so you want a nice wide angle lens almost fisheye I mean fisheye is fantastic if you get cheap fisheye it gives you uh, a lot of um, a kind of uh, a bend at the edges of the of the picture which you can make it look good but you know uh, you are limiting your your ability to take uh, photos if you if you use a true fisheye but you want to get closest to fisheye as, as possible having said that if you use Lightroom you've got fisheye corrections which you can take that bulge out quite effectively nowadays so um, wide angle and and small now um, the reason I have it small is one you know, I've, I've, I'm limited to what I can I can use but I've got to take it with me you've got to take it with you if you're going to take photographs you have gotta take it with you it sounds sounds obvious but you know if you don't take it with you you're not going to get a shot so um, you got to be you've got to have it in a hard case you've got to have it in a hard case so you can take it around from place to place and you're not worried about it um, I, I use the pelly cases and spend a lot of time getting as much as I can into a tiny spot and then and it gets thrown on a boat it gets dropped it's it's literally bomb proof pelly cases are bomb proof I've moved on I'm, I'm using a slightly a semi hard case now mm, I'm not quite as happy with it but it's same same thing happens it can go on a boat it can get wet it can get you know you know, handed to people yeah because you've got to take it places the second thing is you gotta use it okay again the same as same as practice 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 you got to use the thing you got to get it out there and use it so I find the smaller it is the more likely I'm gonna have it with me and I get used to having it clipped on my belt I've got a nice a belt clip or um, I, um, I have it in the boy or wherever I have it have it have it wherever I go and I'll just use it but don't get annoying with it as soon as you start getting annoying with it people won't want to dive with you and you're going to lose the opportunity so it's a fine balance between being annoying and actually uh, using it enough okay so my uh, for many years I was using a uh, Sony RX uh, 100 and it's a compact camera um, so you can see it's it's a tiny little camera here a movable view screen it's got a fixed lens you can't take the lens off and these are now the cameras themselves are super cheap uh, this is the version 4 but I had the version 2 as well and this is an Aquapaza housing which is absolutely tiny you can see Matt putting it in there how tight it is into there uh, it clips shut and turns on and the lens works inside um, there is a version 5 and a 6 but the 6 uh, has a wide angle thing don't use it the, the version 6 is not very good uh, for underwater and then we put an in on wide angle uh, fisheye lens on the front and this is a wet lens means it can be taken off uh, when you're underwater and it can be housed uh, on the, the, the top bracket here it's a nice idea very not very used uh, not used very often but uh, you know it, it's it's a nice idea now um, I've moved on to my uh, trusty um, Alpha 6500. Okay, uh, again, there's several of these around, several versions around. There is the one that's just under this, but it's got some extra features that are slightly better. I went for this one uh, because the housing is slightly better. So um, uh, see the the uh, modified green tape that holds the flash down because we had some problems with the flash popping up in the housing. Um, and it's got a pancake lens on it so it's got a wide angle uh, pancake lens on it with a fixed focus and then on top of that I've got a uh, fisheye converter uh, or a super wide angle converter I, 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 it depends where I am as to which one I've got and this means uh, when it goes in there isn't a lens on the outside that clips in by the way it's a really nice setting at the bottom you see a little silver thing that's a spare battery there that's a spare battery which means the camera uh, lasts um, th 
three times as long as on as a camera battery. You can see the blue light flash in there because it's got um, uh, a, um, a leak meter, so it senses it. You create a, a vacuum in it, and if any water gets in, uh, an alarm goes off. And that's it. But you can see it's pretty small, um, and you can see it's 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 handy. One handle. It comes with two. Take one off because I, I, I never have two hands kind of free. Um, so plenty of cameras out there that's what I use uh, the reason I use uh, that one is because the housing I say has got that little tiny little battery in there which gives you, you know, three times as, as much uh, life uh, battery life it's it's yeah fantastic um, the Sony's are work well in dark uh, in in the dark which is why I've always gone for the Sony's. Uh, I switched over from Canon uh, uh, you know, eight years ago or so uh, because underwater it's dark. No matter what you do, it's dark. So you want the, the dark capabilities. So I've gone for Sony and they do some incredible, incredible uh, work behind it. And you can geek out on the, on the, on the abilities of the cameras. Say I've had an RX100, which if you're thinking about starting, I s really suggest you get one of them. There's plenty of houses out there for them. The cameras themselves are quite cheap. The RX, the RX100 Mark II is like you can get them second hand for like 100 quid. They're about 300 quid new, something like that. Um, and, and, and you can take some cracking shots. Some of the shots that I've shown you today are from the uh, RX100. Um, uh, this, this, that was taken on the RX100, which means you know you can blow it up quite, quite well. Um, obviously, moving on, you go for the for the mirrorless uh, camera like this with with the interchangeable lenses. Um, it kind of ups ups the the pixels and ups the quality of of a picture you can get. But I'm still sticking with a Sony, um, and pretty much. Um, I think that's it uh, for my my information about my cameras I use. Uh, oh, I did say I'd I'd say about the settings. So uh, I uh, preset the white balance on here, and you've got two programmable buttons. So I have one set for uh, white balance. You've got three white balance settings. So I'll have one set for surface all the time. So setting one is always the surface. I change it, you know, if I'm in. Wales, Wales when it's raining or, or, or you know Greece if it's super sunny but effectively I just had it fairly neutral <clears throat> then I'll have one set about five meters and I'll have one set for say 20 meters uh, I'm unlikely to be doing um, shots deeper than 20 meters without preparing and setting up the camera for it so I've got three preset white, white balances for surface um, say five meters and about 20 meters and what do I do? How do I do that? I just point it into the blue and set the white balance. Okay, so at five meters, I don't have a white sheet or a white shirt or anything like that. Just point it into the blue, set it. Okay. Uh, and then at 20 meters, point it in the blue. If I've got sand, I might use sand, but that's it, and I've set it. So as soon as I get in the water, every time I, I, I go get in the water with my camera, bang, five meters, 20 meters. And you don't even have to go down to 20 meters. You can you can point down at 20 meters. You go to 10 and point down at 10 at 20, and set it. Um, <clears throat> and then I will take a few shots, usually on auto, because it's amazing to see what the camera tells you it thinks you need. Okay, and from that point, then I can start pushing what what I want. Usually, uh, I want it a bit quicker. Um, so uh, I will take the shutter speed down um, and then up the ISO uh, to, to kind of compensate um, aperture I know these lenses they're not fantastic uh, at um, you know when the aperture is fully fully open so I'll close the aperture down a little bit just a little bit just like uh, two or three notches or something um, but again it depends if you're in pitch black I have it wide, wide open because I want as much light as I can, and I really push the uh, push the my my capability of holding it holding it steady. But again, the six five hundred has an incredible anti shake, incredible. It's just amazing. Um, whereas the other the other um, Alpha series aren't quite as uh, as good as the anti shake. So I can I can take like um, you know a quarter of a second 
and pretty much keep it keep it still. Trouble is, things are moving in front of me, so that's that's a kind of different problem. And that's it, really. Uh, never use a flash. Never ever use a flash. So I've uh, stuck this down, um, and and that's it. Um, I don't have any strobes. All I use are video lights and spotlights if I need. Um, and um, sorry, curious of making some <laughs> signs of me. Okay, so um, and beware of the temperature. So uh, preload your camera if you're getting in cold water. Hang it in the cold water before you get in, else it'll steam up. If you're at cold and you're getting warm water, do the same thing. Okay, leave it in the leave it in the water for a little while, and that's it. Okay, so. Um, Thank you very much. Hopefully see you tomorrow night. So stretching tomorrow night, uh, general free dive stretching. That's all you need, all the stretching you need for free diving tomorrow night. Now it's 7.59, uh, which means I've got to go and uh, clap at the window and thank everybody who's out there putting themselves in danger to keep my me safe and to keep my life uh, ticking over. So thank you to everybody out there. And uh, yeah, and let's go clap.